because as your heart opens and the vibration of love starts to grow stronger and stronger, you start to recognize them as yourself. It's just great to see you all today. And um, there's a little echo going on right now. <laughs> so I just wanted to introduce myself as Nicholas and I wanted to invite my co-host from Mexico, Andy! <laughs> my brother's here in the studio. Yeah. Oh, it's so good to see <laughs> yeah, it's great to be here in person. <laughs> Our first show in person. <laughs> I just teleported from Mexico and now yeah. here we are. Power of the mind. It's, it's true. But, um, yeah, I'm just excited to have you right on here. And yeah, I think we were just talking the other day. <laughs> We're kind of praying, you know, every week we get together and we pray and we're like, okay, what are we going to talk about on this next show, right? Mm -hmm. It's like kind of like in a prayer asking the Holy Spirit. And this week it kind of felt like it was gentleness. Yeah. And then after I heard gentleness and we heard it together and then next thing you know, we're watching the Mr. Rogers documentary yesterday and the whole thing was about gentleness, you know, just the whole his whole attitude and it was so soft and sweet and beautiful. And yeah, I guess I never really knew that I wasn't gentle with myself mm. on some level because I, I've gotten like so many like signs and symbols like, Hey, just be gentle with yourself. Just be gentle with yourself. And every time I heard that, I'm like, yeah, yeah, you know, I am gentle, right, <laughs> right. but you know, it kind of was coming out of like a, I am gentle, not actually, you know, mm. but it was like, I guess I got so many signs because, um, you know, I was in Mexico, as you guys know, in La Casa de Milagros, and we have this kind of buddy system where, you know, you might have a buddy at one of our centers in the community, and it's someone that you go to for mind support, and, mm -hmm. and um, I was Carolina's buddy, and she's in Mexico right now, and I noticed that, yeah, she's probably watching. <laughs> I noticed that a lot of times when we would be like joining together like this uh -huh. and um, she would be expressing her emotions or something. And I would just say um, a lot of times what would come out of my mouth is like, just, just be gentle. With yourself. Right. Like, don't beat yourself up. Just be gentle with yourself. And then um, David came over to La Casa, the house, and he, we had this little gathering and, um, I I was expressing something to him and and then he was saying a lot of things to me and he, every one of them was like resonating like yes 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 and then he said uh, but yeah just be gentle with yourself and I was like hmm I am gentle <laughs> but it's like that, that one like didn't one that one didn't click it was like yes 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 <laughs> you know it's like something wasn't completely clicking it's like I thought I was or something you know mm -hmm. and then. And then on another day, I was getting so many symbols. Symbols. On another day, we uh, had these expression sessions at lunch. You know, we practice no private thoughts. So we're having a lunch expression session. People were saying what's on their heart. And um, yeah, I had expressed something. And then Michael Caruana was facilitating that session that day. And basically, he told me <laughs> exactly word for word what I have had been telling Carolina almost every day like hey just be gentle with yourself like don't beat yourself up just be gentle with yourself and all of a sudden it hit me i was like oh my god you're telling me exactly what i've been telling caroline this whole time and i kept thinking like oh poor girl like <laughs> she just needs to stop beating herself up but you know it's like yeah. when we see something in someone else and we really think it's in them like guess right. where it's coming from 
know? It's like the whole uh, pointing finger thing. It's like yeah. Nicholas isn't gentle with himself. But look, then, look how many fingers are pointing back at me. Yeah, I like it. They were saying you got the, you got three. You got the Father, the, the, the <laughs> Jesus, or the Son, and the Holy Ghost pointing right back at you. It's it's your mind. Yeah, it's your lesson. It's never someone else's lesson, especially. Yeah, it was just so many reminders and symbols. It was like the Holy Spirit trying to reach me. Like every one of those times, it's like, hey, you're not really gentle with yourself. Like, be gentle with yourself. And so, and then, and then Netta, Netta Bowen, who's going to have a pre-recorded show later today, she came over to La Casa while I was there. And we did like this voice liberation kind of workshop with just us at La Casa. And mm. And we each took turns singing our own name out to everyone else. Right. And uh, I would, I'm not a singer or anything. So it, this was really expansive for me to do. And so basically it came to my turn and I was just, I just had to sing like Andy. You know? And then, uh, hmm. so I just said, okay, Holy Spirit, you do all things through me. You do this one as well. And then I just started singing, singing my name and, it was so sweet and gentle. It was like, it wasn't, it wasn't Aww. me, Andy, singing. <laughs> it was more of like some kind of gentle angel singing like, Andy, like, just, just remember, just remember the softness, like, remember the gentleness, like, remember that, like, everything's okay. You know, uh. it's like, just remember that. Just don't push yourself so hard. Just be, so, be gentle with yourself. Like, don't uh. beat yourself up. Like, nothing can go wrong. You can't mess this up. Like, it's okay. Mm. You know, so that's why. I, and then this image of, like, two little lambs keeps yeah, you coming to them. my mind. When, after we felt that it was gentleness for the show, yeah. that, that image at the same time actually started coming up. So it feels like we're just, like, two little lambs, you know? We're all, like, we're all lambs for Jesus, <laughs> and he's the shepherd. It's like, I won't forget <laughs> you. You're with me. I've got you. I love you. Just follow me. Stay on the path with me. Yeah, like we don't have to be so hard on ourselves, mm. you know. Yeah, I feel like ultimately we're realizing that like we were never responsible for all these things that we kept beating ourselves up about. And it's like the beating up beating yourself up it doesn't actually help. Like it doesn't do anything. You know, it's just it feels like even like a layer um further away from the solution it's like you know in the course of metaphysics and everything it talks about the son of god um like this tiny mad idea came in and the son of god remember not to laugh you know right, he took the thought to. seriously he beat himself up basically right. <laughs> like, like, <laughs> the, that was the seeming whole issue was beating yourself up yeah, there was, was a seeming misthought and it was like oh like damn what did i just do it's like yeah that's <laughs> yeah i'm so messed up wow i can't believe i did that and then all these defenses come up and then the whole world comes out of it and it's like and the holy spirit's like that's impossible it's okay like chill i took care of it <laughs> <laughs> just follow me relax <laughs> yeah relax it's like you can't actually do anything wrong. Mm. but again it's like it's like there's this unconscious mind that so believes that we've done something wrong. So that whole unconscious mind with all the darkness in it needs to be brought up to the light, like brought up and made conscious so that then you can actually see that you're truly innocent. But the way it seems to be right now is like, you know, there's this unconscious, it's so dark and like, you know, even um, Jesus in the course describes it as it's draped with sin, you know, and that's just a metaphor, but um, it's, it's only seems so dark and scary and, uh, vicious and horrible and whatever, because it's not looked upon, you know, it's like kept hidden. It's like, oh, I have this dirty little secret that I've killed God and made up this whole world. So I'm going to just shove it down there and never look at it again. And I made like this, um, oath written in blood with the ego to never look upon this again. And then you just like throw it in deep in deep, deep, deep into your mind under levels mm. of levels of defense mechanisms and, and closed doors and just, just gets darker and darker. And then, 
but the funny part is like there's nothing actually there but it's it's like we're not actually going to experience that until we start to let up that unconscious to be brought up to the light you know and we have to do that from the bottom up just like david and jason show and one of the ways you can do that is you know in this community we have uh, no private thoughts no people pleasing mm -hmm. And it's like with the no private thoughts, it's like the, we, uh, in the course it says, you know, you don't really have any private thoughts, but it's the same as the unconscious mind. If, if um, we push a lot of things out of awareness, it's like we, we're not going to come to the experience that there's nothing actually there until we raise it up. So with the no private thoughts, one of the means to raise those thoughts to awareness is we have these expression sessions. And so... Um, especially those thoughts that seem to be looping in the mind or the ones that seem like especially horrible. It's like those are the ones, the ones that have a charge in them. Those are the ones we often express so that they can be brought up out of that unconscious or subconscious brought to the light so that they can be dissolved. And so that ultimately we can see that they were never our thoughts, mm. you know, and, um, we had this expression session over at La Casa in Mexico. That was right, seven hours long. That. Seven hours. Yeah. I remember this one day I was just walking through La Casa and I don't know what happened, but it's, it's funny. These, I have a lot of these like deep prayers that seem to come out of seeming nowhere. Mm -hmm. And this was one of those times I was just walking through and all of a sudden I, I had this prayer. Like I want to, how did I word it? I don't know. I, I said something like, I want to release my entire unconscious to the light. Like, I want to <laughs> let me bring up my entire unconscious and oh yeah, yeah. I want to reveal my unconscious mind. That was like the prayer. It was something around Careful those what lines. you pray for because prayers are answers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, prayers are answers. So shortly after that, I was starting to get signs and symbols of all these seeming horrible things, memories and. Uh, things that I thought I did in my life and all these things started to come and uh, the first thought was like okay yeah I'll just give the Lord to Holy Spirit you know it's fine it's whatever right. I got it you know like denial you know? Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, so I would try to do that I would give it over mm -hmm. and uh, they wouldn't really move and but at the same time I was stuck in this place of like they're not moving by myself, but you know, I don't need to express them. You know, it was, it was like a denial because they were very deep. And then, um, and it was funny around that same time, I didn't tell anyone about that prayer, um, physically, but we had this theme over at La Casa that all of a sudden Michael Caruana and Deanna Markin kept saying, um, um, okay, guys, let's share, share your deepest, darkest secrets. <laughs> and like, they would say that over and over. And each time I'd be like, eh, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't, I don't need to share those things that were coming up. But, but it was like, I don't feel still, good, but that's okay. <laughs> yeah, it was still this denial because they were like starting to really come up, bubbling up to the surface. And then this one session, finally, um, we had like an hour too long, hour to too long, two hour long session and um i still hadn't expressed what my prayer was to express you know these things in my unconscious mind and then finally after like the session was just about over it was like a one to two hour session it was just about over and uh michael was like or michael or diana was like okay anyone else want to express and i was just sitting there <laughs> like hmm is this is this time to do it Hmm. And then I was like, I was just about to like get up and leave with everyone else. But I was like, okay, I might have something. It was like so <laughs> many levels of <laughs> denial. I was like, yeah, I might have something. Okay. And then, uh, um, but I'm not sure, you know, I don't know. It's probably nothing. And then Michael was like, well, how do you feel? And I was like, and that's a really good question. You know, the course always says the one right use of judgment is how do I feel? So I was like, okay, how do I feel? I was like, not bad, but not great. And you know, anything less than supreme happiness is it's a compromise. Is a compromise, yeah. right? So, yeah, I I was like, yeah, it was really like, it's like the the conscious mind was this line, let's say, and then 
all these memories and things that horrible things were like right underneath the surface and I was like barely touching them at that time but I was like okay you know what I'm just gonna go for it and then I, I just started to express all these things that I thought were so deep and dark and horrible and terrible and whatever and then uh, after I shared a lot of them what I saw was <laughs> it was like another level that I had to go because I said all of them but then I noticed that I felt really horrible and they had it released mm. and now i had shared with everyone all these horrible things totally exposed but yeah. they yeah. hadn't left my mind yet so I, I almost panicked um but then i caught myself and i noticed something and it's it feels very deep because i noticed oh wow i just shared all these things and now it feels like i'm at another little obstacle but i'm seeing that after i shared all these things I want everyone to think I messed up mm -hmm. because of this addiction to guilt. It's like, mm -hmm. I almost wanted to stop there and be like, okay, now I expect everyone to say, wow, what's wrong with you? You know, to mm -hmm. get reflections of guilt and sin and whatever. So I caught myself right there and then I was like, oh, wow. And then I expressed, okay, now I want to let go of my addiction to guilt and I want to expose that now I want all of you guys to, to reflect back that I'm a horrible person. Mm -hmm. So I, once I said that, it was like whoosh, like mm -hmm. something just released from my mind and like, like it was like absolutely unbelievable. It was amazing the, the experience after that. Everyone just ran over, gave me a hug and oh. you know, cause there's nothing you can say that will make you a deep, dark, terrible sinner. Like there's absolutely nothing you can say because they're not your thoughts. You know? just turn, yeah. That's why. Hmm. But again, you're not going to get to that experience until you're willing to bring them up to the light. Hmm. And then it was funny, back to that whole, like whatever you see in others is what's in yourself. Because whenever, when Michael and Deanna kept saying, yeah, okay, share your deep, dark, dark secrets and no one seemed to be sharing them i had this thought oh these guys they're not they're not sharing their deep dark secrets right, it's their what fault. are they doing yeah they're, they're not no one's sharing they're holding back they're holding me. back <laughs> <laughs> it was like, but yeah as you can see it's so obvious who wasn't sharing them yeah. back to the whole three fingers yeah and it's like the, if you're hearing it, it's for you <laughs> <laughs> so so then and guess what? After I shared all those, guess what happened? Everyone started to share all these deep, dark things. And at that point, it was 7 o'clock. We were done at 2 a.m. We had gone seven hours straight, starting from that point where I expressed that, mm. all that stuff. And, and it was just, I mean, it was for the entire universe. It was like, right. I could feel like... Nice use of time, actually. Yeah. It's like the continents were shaking, the, the tectonic <laughs> plates were moving. It's a, It just felt like, yeah. It was amazing. What was it that Diana said to you at the end? Yeah, and, and she was like, you know, you can never go back now. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. It's like, yeah. It's that, like, fourth question. Would you say, yeah. like, I want to see what I've denied because it is the truth. Like, that's the one where... Once it's like, yeah, there's no going back once you've said yeah. that. Once you've said yes to that. Yeah, and it's so powerful because it's like once I expose all those things, it's like it's like I realize, wow, like I never actually did any of them. And like they were never really ever my thoughts and I wasn't ever responsible for those thoughts. Like I was always innocent, you know, it's like yeah, it was just amazing. And of course again it's like I only thought I was, yeah, it's like, it was only because they were, you know, in, in shadows. They were not seen clearly to see that they weren't actually there, but they were all black. Mm. Well, that's where you're conscious. really, <clears throat> that experience is really kind of an example of living, like the teaching of it. It's like, rather than what you had just mentioned of saying, oh, you know, they're not real thoughts. It's fine. It's like, that's where you can actually, okay, but how do I feel when I say that? Do I feel at peace? Does it actually let go? You know, do I feel released, light and all that, or do I still feel heavy? Cause that's when you can tell you're metaphysically ghosting 
you're not actually having the healing effect of it. And then actually exposing it, seeing it, like letting these spirit given symbols, these mighty companions, uh, like having it exposed to them and basically there being no reflection of guilt with that prayer that's actually underneath it all of like, I want to know that I'm innocent I'm truly innocent beyond behavior, beyond the seeming right and wrong doings or right, right or wrong thinking, any of that. I want to know I'm truly innocent, like that deep core feeling. And, and then you experience it actually. That's like, oh, they're actually not my thoughts, but it's from an experience. Like I, I know a lot of times I would just say, ah, uh, like, yeah, they're, they're not real. They're not real. How do I feel? <laughs> I feel like they're damn real. <laughs> That's what I feel. <laughs> so I just, I love it. That's a very practical example. And I was just coming to mind because one of the other things that was coming to us as we were just kind of praying on the topic was like not perceiving our own best interests. And I just kept seeing this lesson number 24 from A Course in Miracles. Uh, the, the lesson title is, I do not perceive my own best interests. In no situation that arises, do you realize the outcome that would make you happy? There. <laughs> I, just, I like how he's just born like that. In no situations. Not some situations. I've heard David say something. Not some in no. those situations and he you know the spirit or jesus doesn't mince words he's being pretty pretty straightforward here <clears throat> therefore you have no guide to appropriate to appropriate action and no way of judging the result <laughs> what you do, this is, what you do is determined by your perception of the situation and that perception is wrong <laughs> so and then during our big um uh, we had a big kind of love day or play day at um at our monastery yes there's 39 of us as andy was mentioning before and uh david had just during the movie gathering he was showing <clears throat> he were reminded of uh that line that i forget where actually maybe it's in the course that it comes from but he was just saying that a decision is a conclusion is a conclusion based, based on, on your you belief on everything you believe so it's a, it's a programming. It's like you think you're actually, you know, making decisions, living a life. Oh, I'm going to move my right arm right now and everything. But it's, it's a conclusion based on everything you believe. And therefore, that's where you really start to see, wow, I really need to, you know, find out what's going on in my consciousness because or else I'm like a robot for the ego, for not love. I'm not going to get to really experience my inheritance, which is total joy unless I'm really aware of what's going on and I start clearing it out, <coughs> clearing out my consciousness of all these false beliefs, you know, just of all these limiting things like, you know, that I'm wrong, that I'm stupid, that I'm ugly, I'm not loved, uh, I can lose love, you know, that people need to respect me, <laughs> people need to listen to me, all these false beliefs. It's like, no, it's like your inheritance is not of this world. It's not, in this world, there's not a certain way that things should be in form, but your experience, you are, you know, is, is to have total joy. So I just love lesson 24 and then lesson 25, I do not know what anything is for. Again, it's like, you know, that big, it's like consciously, why would you ever have a seven hour <laughs> expression of just completely seemingly making yourself totally vulnerable? You know, the ego, would, no, don't say that. They could use it against you or someone could like, whatever, you know, it could be misused. And yet, you know, I do not perceive my own best interests. I do not know what anything is for. <laughs> and then review, lesson 55, the review for number 24, you know, I do not perceive my own best interests. My own best interests. How could I recognize my own best interests when I do not know who I am? Boom. <laughs> I was, I love that. It was coming to my mind. Like how how could you know? Like, I don't know, even practice I I don't know, it feels like so practical in the moment. Just like I don't know, I think of like born identity or something like that. One of those movies. Like you don't know who you are, so what could you do? What I think are my best interest would merely bind me closer to the world of illusions. 
I am willing to follow the guide God has given me to find out what my own best interests are, recognizing that I, that I cannot perceive them by myself. So, I just, well, I love that I do not perceive my own best interests because I don't know who I am because I love the movie analogy. You know, it's like, it's like we're watching a movie about these characters like Andy and Nicholas. And then mm-hmm. it's like, it's like we just seem to pick a character and then think that we're like actually the character and then we identify with the character's thoughts and then we feel the character's emotions. But it's like, it's saying, I don't know my own best interest because I don't know who I am. It's like, I thought that I'm this character in a movie Mm -hmm. when I'm actually the dreamer of the dream. And that's like, that's the ultimate goal. It feels like, you know, we want to get back to the dreamer of the dream, but until then it's like there's, there's, there's huge identity confusion. So it's like, that's why I don't know what anything is for. So like, how could I if I think I'm a character in a movie? Right. It's like, how could I know my own best interest if I think I'm a character in a movie? Well, just even, I was just thinking, like, for myself, like, wow, if I could really hold that in my mind consistently, how different would my even decisions be? Because if I'm thinking I'm a person, it's like, oh, you know what? <sighs> you know, this feels kind of boring right now. Maybe I want to go get some food or I'm going to do this. But if I'm thinking I'm the spirit, it's like, wow, what? what would you have me do? How could I express this total joy? How could I just be totally used in the most helpful way? It's like, it expands you. It's no longer this personal, like I need survival. It's, it's this total thriving sort of experience. Like what would it matter anymore? What seems to happen to the body where it seems to live it's like, you're just really going for the content at that point. And that's what I see. Like every time I can really keep it in mind, like, I do not know my own best interests. Like, what would you have me do? What's most helpful here? Just trying to be really honest with myself in the moment and just kind of feel feel it. Like, am I, you know, part of me might want to speak with one person, but the Spirit's, like, pulling me. No, what would be most helpful is to go over here and join with this person because I don't know what anything is for. I don't know my own best interests. So I don't know what will happen other than that it's for joy, it's for connection, it's for miracles. Yeah, yeah. it's for healing that identity confusion. Yeah. yeah. And I was just even thinking, because a lot of this came up, Andy and I were praying the other day just on the topics for our show this week, and we were just sitting outside and just meditating. and All of a sudden I got this flash of Andy in my mind back from high school. He had like more of a, a bowl haircut. <laughs> <laughs> and and I just remember, like, I don't know, I can't remember exactly how, was, how you were, but it was, there's was just like a different vibe. And here, I just, I could like see him in this moment and he just looks so serene and soft and loving. I could just, I could just remember a bit of this transformation. It felt so surreal. I was like, whoa, like you're, you're not that anymore. Like it's, you know, we're, you're just not that you're this new thing. And it just felt so like soft and gentle and loving. So it's just a real, yeah, beautiful thing. So be gentle with yourself on this deep inward journey. Yes. Be like a fluffy little lamb, <laughs> like a little cloud just floating along. Mm-hmm. So I think we're out of time now, but had a lot of fun with you guys today and we have a lot of amazing shows for the rest of the day. So make sure to keep on staying tuned. And I think our next show might be in a few weeks, but yeah. Thank you guys. And thank you, Nicholas. Oh, it was such a pleasure great. having you. Yeah. Thank you, brother. Oh, I love you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.